What's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a great day. Today, we are talking about rolling options on the Robinhood platform. There's actually a bunch of different ways or styles of rolling, and we're going to cover all of those here in this video so you kind of understand what they are and why you would want to do those things. Uh, and then we'll kind of walk you through some examples of how to do that on your own Robinhood account. We are on the desktop platform, the web app, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not a desktop app. It's just Robinhood on my desktop computer, logged in online. So it's going to be similar to your mobile app, you know, and it's just the layout's a little bit different. But what you're going to need to do is go into the options that you're currently holding in order to roll them. So you can't roll a position that you don't already have. So let's start there. Um, and now, why would you want to do this? There's a lot of reasons why. But it's because as you're in a trade, something happens. Or as you, you know, make a trade or do something, something happens where you see opportunity. Now, let's say you're someone like myself in this specific portfolio who actually owns a couple of stocks. I actually own four stocks at the current time I'm filming this video. Um, some more risky than others, others for other reasons. A lot of these stocks are, are down towards 52-week lows anyway, so I think the risk reward is pretty darn good anyway at a minimum, but it's about half the portfolio or half the account inside of these stocks. But the way that I justify some of the riskier stocks is, well, I can sell options against my positions. It's going to cash flow, and it's also going to minimize downside. Uh, and of course, if these stocks already have taken big hits, I think they could be seeing that for reversals, right? My risk reward is a lot better anyway. But that's besides the point. If you want to see updates on this portfolio, there's a link down below to my personal channel. Check that out. If you guys want to follow along every Saturday, we post updates across all the portfolios, full transparency, all that good stuff, losses, winners, nothing to hide, just great lessons there across the board. So let's dive into it. Let's say I have owned, let's just say I'm going to go off this Intel. Let's say I own 100 shares of Intel, which I actually do, uh, and I have an average cost of 36 bucks. You think, oh man, that's a pretty nice, you know, nice and round. I had to get it on 36. Well, I sold a put uh, in order to get to get that. So instead of just buying at, at 36, I said, hey, let me sell a put and I'm willing to buy the stock at 36 bucks. And so I got paid to sell the put. And then I also had to buy the, the stock when it came to that strike price, as long as it finished under 36 on the expiration. And it did. And so that's why I got filled. But if you take a look down here, we have a little option position right now. So every single week, what I do is or pretty much every single week, I'll come in and I'll sell a covered call. So once you own 100 shares of the of an underlying stock or of a stock, I don't say underlying stock, of a stock, you have the ability to now sell options against your position. Now, because I own 100 shares, I can sell one call, right? Now, when I sell a call, what happens is if that call expires worthless, so let's say someone was like, oh man, I'm bullish on Intel. I don't have $3,500 to buy 100 shares. I'm just going to buy a call. They buy the call that I sell. Okay. And when I sell that call to them, I'm essentially giving up my rights to that stock if it was to expire over that strike price of the call. Okay. And on the put side, when I sell a put, I'm essentially saying I'm going to buy this stock if it closes underneath the strike price of this put by the expiration. We've got some other options videos here on the channel if you want to look deeper and dive into options. That's a good idea. I would recommend it if you're kind of unfamiliar with how this stuff works. But once I've got the position, you'll notice this guy down here. If I click on this guy, now it will open up my option position on this stock. Now, I could be along this, this call. I could be short this call. In this case, I am short this call, meaning I sold the call to open. And in order to close the position, either I'll let it expire worthless, nothing happens. I kept what I sold it for originally. That's great. That's what I want to happen. Or I could buy it back. And if you buy it back for more than what you sold it for, that's your loss. And if you buy it back for less, that's your gain. Okay. So now you'll notice on the right-hand side, it says roll position. So I can roll this position. Now, what, what's this whole deal with rolling? Like what, what's, what's up with this? Essentially, when it comes down to rolling, you are closing one position, which would be this position, simultaneously while opening another one. So I'm getting out of this one while also getting into another one, and they kind of combine the orders so that it all happens at the same time. Does it really matter? Do you need to, to always roll a position? No, you don't have to do this. I mean, what, you, what I tend to do myself a lot on you know, other platforms where they don't have the feature this easily you know, accessible, I'll just close an option and I'll go buy something else or I'll go sell something else at a different strike price. It's the same thing. Effectively, it's the same thing as rolling. 
Robin Hood tries to make it a little bit easier on you so you can kind of roll it all at the same time. It's nicer, it keeps it more concise, it keeps it pretty straightforward and easy, so it could be useful. But let's just say this Intel call, right? Let's just say that Intel starts to rip and it starts to go higher and higher. And we're getting closer to that expiration. I'm like, oh shoot, I actually don't want to give up my Intel shares. I might want to roll this position. So what I'll do here in this case is click on roll this position. Now we get to this. I'm going to go out to a time frame of my choice. In this case, I have the August 12th um, calls that I have sold, which we can see indicated by the negative one right there. Now, realistically, not that big of a deal because they're so far out, you know, it's probably not going to get taken out because when I'm filming the video, um, it's on a Wednesday afternoon and, you know, essentially Intel would have to go, I know I say essentially a ton, but bear with me. Intel would need to go up over two bucks, which for Intel, it's a pretty big jump percentage wise in two days to get to that August 12th expiration because it's currently the 10th when I'm filming. So, this case, I'm not going to actually do this, but let's just say that Intel was up around 37 right now, and I'm like, oh my, I actually don't want to give up my shares. I might want to roll my position out even further, okay? That's what I would do. So then what I would do is I'd come in here and I'd say, all righty, I'm going to go out to, let's say, the 38s or the 39s or the 40 strike price, and I'm going to roll it. And I'm going to click on that strike, click on that option, click on that, boom. And what's going to happen is on, on my short call on the right-hand side, the order entry, it says I'm going to be, well, I'm going to be buying to close my current position. That top that top position is my current position. I'm going to be buying to close while at the same time also selling to open a covered call at 39.50, okay? It's going to cost me about $1 to do so. That's the total debit, okay? Uh, credit would mean you're going to get paid. Debit in this case would be I'm paying, okay, out of my account. Another option in this case, that, that's called rolling up. Another option is to roll down. So in this case, maybe I'm sitting here like, you know what? There's no way Intel is coming anywhere near this strike price. Maybe I want to roll it down about a dollar and see if I can, you know, get a little bit closer and squeak out a few extra bucks in terms of selling these covered calls. So what I'll do is I'll roll, I'll move down a, about a dollar here in this case to 3650s. And now what's going to happen is you'll see that I have a total credit of $2. Why? Because the current option that I have is worth two cents. The one that I'm looking to actually you now get into and reposition into is worth four, okay? And I am closing my negative one option position, my covered call that I sold, and I'm gonna be opening a new one. So I'm gonna be selling to open this one, which is a new one, but it's closer to the current price, hence it's worth more, which means now when I sell it, I'm going to get paid four cents. I have to pay two cents to buy this one back, close out of this one. But by doing so, it allows me now the freedom because now once I get rid of this, I still have 100 shares of the stock with no open option positions against it. I now have the freedom to go out and sell one closer to the money to squeeze out a few extra bucks. Now, this is actually something that you could do and it's useful. And uh, honestly, I, I don't do this enough and I definitely should because as I get closer to expiration dates and I'm like, yeah, there's absolutely no way that that strike is hitting. Not that it really matters, but a couple dollars here and there, you know, starts to stack up if you do it week after week after week. You know, you can start to see that that now allows you to compound your portfolio faster, think of it as a dividend, and you can even roll that money back into buying more shares down the road of a different stock or the same stock, and you can kind of see how that snowball plays out, which is why it's useful. So I would highly recommend um, you try doing this, and you can do this on when you sell puts, when you sell covered calls, whatever you want to do. But now the other side of things is when it comes to your option positions, let's say you're long. So if I'm going to go buy a Intel call right now at this price, let's just say that I was buying and I wasn't rolling and I bought these 36.50 um, strikes for four cents, pretty cheap, right? Four bucks out of my account. But I realize as we get closer to that date, uh, there's no way. There's no way these are going to be worth anything. I might want to roll out in time. And so that's where using the expiration date comes in. Just make sure you understand, you know, you're, you're always double checking the expiration date here. So in this case, I'm like, yeah, you know, these Intel calls that I'm I'm looking to buy here, where I have, let's say I bought the 36 calls for 10 cents. 
and we're getting closer and closer and they're not going to, there's like almost no way they're going to expire worth. They're going to expire with any value. They're going to expire worthless. So I'm going to say, I want to go out an extra week. I still like the position. Intel is still setting up the way I want it. I'm going to go out one more week and then I'll go out here. I'll roll my position, change the strike or change the expiration date to the date that I want it. And then I'll just change um, the strike price or I'll just, ch I'll, I'll buy the exact same strike price. And in that case, it's going to cost you some money because these options are going to be more expensive. For example, the 36 for this, the for the 12th was only 10 cents. Now these 36s are worth 35. So in that case, I would be closing the 10 cents, taking 10 cents back and then having to pay 35 here. So net 25 cents or $25 per option out of my account that it would cost to roll. So in some scenarios, like we went through, rolling could make you money or credit you more money. And then other scenarios, rolling is going to cost you more money, but it's done with a purpose and there's a reason why you're doing that. So that's how you roll options here on Robinhood. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment section, like always. Any links, resources are down there. A webinar covering three trading signals to add to your arsenal for free if you want to check it out. Outside of that, thanks so much for watching. Thumbs up button. Plenty of videos here for free. Check them out and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.